On today's session and indeed the, the next few to come, do you expect more of the same? James, I think you'd have to call it a bunga bunga bloodbath on the market today. <laughs> really all about Italy and the market's perception that Italy's 10-year bond yields has crossed a line in the sand and that line was at 7%. We saw it reaching a high of 7.33%. So it is concerns about Italy's debt, the impact it's going to have in terms of the credit markets, in terms of the Eurozone um, banks and in terms of Italy as a nation as well. We have a look across the market. It was made worse in terms of the Australian market performance because of ANZ and National Australia both going ex-dividend today. So ANZ down by 5.7% uh, today and NAB was down by 4.7%. And of course that material sector being hit hard. We saw investors moving to safe haven assets and currencies like the US dollar and that was bad news for commodity prices. Bad news for BHP Billiton down by 2.2%, Rio Tinto losing 2.6%. But Fortescue Metals, one of the worst in that sector, down by a massive 8% in one session. There was one stock which buck the trend in that material space and that was Silver Lake. It managed a gain of 6.6% and they came out with quite a positive uh, copper announcement today. But altogether, the market really just reacting to, to those Italian 10-year bond yields and waiting for a reaction from the European Central Bank to see whether it's going to go on a bond buying program to help support yields and of course whether it's going to be limited or unlimited so the size of that bond buying program. But Peter mentioned before bouncing off that 4200. I mean are we uh, where are we seeing uh, the market at the moment on a technical perspective? In terms of technicals, we've been going sideways for the last few weeks, but in terms of the longer term trend, the market has been falling. We're still down 40% from the peak that we saw back in 2007. So the longer term trend is downwards, but the short term trend, we've been trending sideways. And of course, we were near the top of that mark yesterday, and we're now going down to the bottom end of that range. The bottom end of that range, 4,135 points, is the level that I'm watching because a break of that will be a break of the head and shoulders formation that has been uh, forming on the Australian market over the last couple of months and that would indicate that we're going back to test under those 4,000 point levels. So technicals, that's what we're watching. In terms of uh, the global financial crisis, I guess uh, our market is very different from where we were during the global financial crisis and a big thing with the companies at the moment is that we've seen massive deleveraging. Back in 2007, the average debt to equity ratio on the Australian market was about 43%. At the moment, we're seeing at less than half of that at around about 20 percent so we have seen debt levels really uh, aggressively leveled off during the global financial crisis and if we have a look at from the peak on the 1st of November 2007 to the low in March 2009 we saw areas like the uh, discretionary sector losing around about 70 percent the industrial sector losing about 70 percent and also the property area losing about 80% because of the high gearing levels. We no longer have those type of levels on the Australian share market. So balance sheets in a much better place. But of course the concern is that we are going to see massive recapitalization of Eurozone banks and perhaps banks around the world. So the financial sector is the one we're watching at the moment. The, the insurance space at the moment? I guess Insurance Australia Group really being hit by all sides, the disasters that we've seen around globally, reinsurance costs rising and it's update today that, that Thailand floods are going to cost it at least about $50 million. But then on the other hand, that insurance sector under a lot of pressure just because correlations around the globe have been at record highs this year in terms of stock performances and different asset classes. And if you have a look at one of the key concerns in Europe at the moment, it's not only due to the, uh, the banks that are uh, concerned but also the insurance companies because they do hold a massive amount of European bonds. So we saw Fitch coming out with a negative outlook on the Italian life and non-life uh, companies and we're starting to see these insurance companies coming under immense pressure and so I don't think the Australian, um, the Australian insurance companies are going to be immune. I think we're going to see a hit to sentiment. This is a space to watch in a negative way.